Hello, Internet. Um, I'm going through several different things on how to possibly play your game, change it, make it different, or just actually just documenting ways things have been done in the past. And um, one of them is uh, ability checks. And this is OSR type games on how you would do 1d20 under the stat. This is a very, very common way of doing statistical checks on people based on their, their skill numbers that they come up with. Um, from strength all the way down to charisma. So, I mean, for some people, if this is very rudimentary, you probably can skip this entire video. For other people, I have never seen this before. I want to know why you do it this way or where to come up from and, you know, different things like that. This, this may be very informative, right? So I play Swords of Wizardry, which is essentially a lot like uh, first edition D&D, which is advanced D&D, except it's a whole lot more streamlined and it's excellently written. Uh, thank Matt Finch for that thing. It's just so beautifully done. I enjoy it because the the game's a little more immersive and there's less bog, you know, that you might get in 5e with a bunch of numbers and crunching and trying to figure things out. It's just very, very straightforward. People get to play. They have a lot of fun. The battles are so quick. It's exciting. If you play it right, this is like one of the the, the nicest, fastest, most clean way of playing it. The other one's White Box, which is another one I really like. Uh, fantastic medieval game it's so awesome um once again you could pop a character out in 15 20 minutes start playing and enjoy it and depending on how your game master runs it uh which i tend to game master like everything pretty much because of the sure fact that I, I enjoy it and i do a lot of visual stuff um it's my way of kind of having people have fun and my house becomes a party center i guess and you know what else you're gonna do you know so uh, so let's look a look at this. This is sort of an interesting concept, uh, 1d20 under the stat. Um, so if let's say you have a group of stats, okay, to, to, to do a, like say something like a strength check, dexterity check or something like that, you would say you roll 1d20 under your number and the, the game master, which of course would be the person deciding based on what the interaction is, uh, determines whether or not you're going to add four or subtract four from your actual roll. There may be something so easy that you're kind of like, you know, uh, okay, fine, you subtract four from your roll, just make sure it's under whatever it is. And so you kind of like say why you even do the check, but some people, kids, people like to roll dice. I, my sons, when we play, love to roll dice. So I love to give them checks. So they have a chance at failing. It makes the story way more interesting too. So sometimes if they want to do something extremely difficult, I say you got to add four to that roll. So um, I'll give a couple examples on kind of how that would work. But the idea behind it was like, once again, this is a very easy way to do checks. It's very efficient. Like I said, if you're playing in a game like this, like OSR, your ability scores don't increase past the point of when you first roll them. Uh, so I know with uh, 5e, for instance, which I've played, um, as you level up, you get plus two to some ability score. You can do this. Yeah, you're getting feats, which you know I don't use in any of my games because I think that they're. It's just one more thing to slow a game down. Everybody should just get you know, get what they get, go with it, and then you develop your character based on your performance, which I think should be. Uh, it's just the way we like to do it, right? So, uh, here's an example. We got Reginald the Brave and Dexter the Dodger, and I use this in the 3D6 check, and I'll just show you how it works with 1D20. So Reginald's going to jump onto a raft and Dexter's going to try to stay on that raft without falling off. And he's got lamp oil all over him and Reginald, he doesn't have lamp oil, but he's going to jump one raft to the other, right? So in the first case, Reginald Brave is going to jump. Uh, the game master says roll 1d20 under your dex. So he has to roll a 12 or less. So that's a 60% chance of being successful, all right? So, so he rolls a 12 or less, and so he's able to do this. He's no problem, just jumps right on the raft, no problem, right? This is a real quick way of doing any of these things, right? But let's say, uh, let's take a look at Dexter. Okay, Dexter's got some problem. He tries to fall off the raft when Rendell jumps on it. However, from a previous encounter, just like last time, he's covered in lamp oil. We, we don't know really why he's walking around with lamp oil, but let's just go with it. So as a game master, you say, okay, you have to have four to your roll. So you have to roll 1d20 plus four. So you have to have your stat, and now, now it's a little harder. Uh, he has basically got to get an eight or less. So his, his odds are a whole lot less. So if he rolled a nine, nine plus four is a 13, uh, Dexter would fail to remain standing on the raft, and he's going to fall into the water. This is just a simple example how to do this. Now, like I said, the, the cutoff, there's a lot of wiggle room. Some people say roll 13 and less. I just say roll under that number, so it's a, I don't include the number. And... It's just a different way of doing it. And like I said, everyone can change these things out any way you want. 
And now the power of this thing is that besides the normal ability checks, people love to roll dice in games. That's why you want to play a game. You, we're just doing a narrative story and I say, I just jump on the raft. Well, we're not changing that other than what you're saying. There's no risk of failure. The risk of failure makes things interesting. I think a lot of people like it when they things go wrong because it makes the story, okay, now Dexter's in the water. He starts going downstream. Well, I'm going to stick my arm out and try to grab him. I'm going to throw a rope. Well, okay, that's going to be a dexterity choke to th throw that rope. I think, like I said, my players love that kind of stuff. It just makes things like happen more, I guess, for there. They actually feel like there's more chaos, yet more control in the game at the same time. And these are your standard, you know, um, ability scores, I mean, ability areas and the things you could do. Like I said, once again, when solving puzzles in a dungeon, that's the one thing where I, you have to kind of figure it out. I'll give you great descriptions, you figure them out. But some people like to say, oh, let's see if you solve the puzzle. What's your intelligence role? Let's find out whether you understand it. I, I like to do, like say you see a creature and someone says, well, have I ever seen a creature like this before? And I say, well, that's kind of like maybe a wisdom check. So someone says, do I think it's poisonous? Well, to think it's poisonous or do you want to say, I I'm look studying its fangs. Well, that's going to be an intelligence check. You can have fun with this any way you want. Like I said, it just adds depth to the game. Let's talk a little bit about the stats. This is where it's interesting. When I did the 3D6, once you get an 18, it's really, really hard to, to roll. I actually, the only if you have an 18 strength, the only way you can fail a 3D6 check with an 18 is by rolling an 18 because everything else will be 17 under. So you get a 94% chance, and that's a rough estimate. With the uh, skill check 1D6, when, I mean, sorry, 1D20, it's a whole lot more linear. And when I say linear is that even with the really, really crappy, let's say, dexterity, your dexterity is three. You're a cleric, you wear plate mail, you're clunky, you got a dexterity of three, and you're trying to jump on a raft, okay? If you had to roll 3D6 under, and you want to go back and check that video, the... Um, you're always going to fail because if you roll three ones, you're not under three. But here you have a possibility of rolling a one and a two. So you, there's a 10% chance. So it's, it's two out of 20, okay? And you could see that this gives a little more of a chance for things to happen. If you just take one stat in the center, like 10, and you can see how it's a 45% chance that you're gonna roll under a 10. But if you add four to it, let's say you're now covered in lamp oil, now it's a 25% chance. You made it a whole lot more difficult. If you have to roll under 10, but let's say the dungeon master said, well, you got really sticky shoes on or special uh, dwarven boots of gum. I don't know, I'm making this up, but you're on the raft and you're able to stand on it and have a very sturdy gait or something like that. Um, you could say, you, you subtract four from your roll. This is going to boost you up. Now, it's, a, it's an easy way of just adding or subtracting to the D roll. Or you could say your, your actual stat, such as dexterity, goes up by four right? Or down by four. You, you can play with this. I think it's just easier for people to add it to the number that they roll without changing their stat. So like I said, this is a, another way you can play this game, do ability checks. And like I said, it depends on your group, which your group might like. I find that um, OSR games, if you're the dungeon master, which I tend to be most of the time, you, you play the game you want to play and you feel comfortable with that it makes it quick and fast for the players. And that's pretty much what I want. I want battles to go quick, be an epic. I, I tend to keep things really exciting for them. And one way you want to do is I don't want to slow down. And then someone says, well, what do I have to roll for that wisdom? Do I add this to, do I add that? I just say, it's just a wisdom check, roll under your stat. It's like, boom, everybody already knows what it is. So it's, it makes the game a little immersive, but a little faster to play. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for listening. Have a good day.